Welcome to the Electric Futurist. My name is Mark, and today we're gonna to be breaking down the 10 best features of the new Chevy Silverado EV. That's right, they finally electrified their biggest nameplate, the Silverado. Got a funny joke I just wrote, just for you Chevy fans. Are you ready for it? If Harry Potter's aunt and uncle lived in the US instead of the UK, which EV would they drive? The Firebolt. Everyone who knows their broomsticks knows what I'm talking about. Before we dive into the 10 best features that I think the Silverado brings to the market, let's dive into the CES 2022 virtual announcement that Chevy just came out with. They announced two vehicles, the work truck and the RST, the lowest price at about 40K and over 100K for the RST premium trim edition. And then the other two announcements they dropped right at the end are two future EVs that are coming out much more affordable, the Equinox at $30,000. Now that is starting to rival the price of the ICE vehicle. And I'm so excited to see prices compete with ICE. That is a great future that I wanna live in. And the second car they previewed was the Blazer. Stick to the end to hear what my personal thoughts are on what I like and dislike about this truck it really does help me start and launch this channel. If you could subscribe, like, and check out the merch in the description. I just dropped the first round of merch and I'm really looking forward to making more videos about the electric future coming from you live from the electric motor city, AKA Detroit, Michigan. So subscribe and let's explore the electric future. Let me know what you think is the biggest game changer in this electric truck market because it is heating up and there's a lot of competition now. Number one, these work configurations. Coming out with a work truck as their first and most affordable one means that they are really aiming to be the truck that can do what you need to be done. Whatever your needs are, there's a ton of customization that they showed off with the bed, the frunk, and for fleet operators and construction and commercial uses, there's going to be specific things that are going to really work well for your business with this truck that can be customized for your work environment. It's really cool to see the potential for you to use this truck on the work site. Next on this list is what I think should be standard with all EVs, and that is bi-directional charging and peer-to-peer -peer charging. There are solutions when your ICE car dies, runs out of gas, but electric cars, it's, it's still new. What happens if your car dies? Now, I've been told it is extremely rare, and because these cars are so smart, the reading out of how much battery you have left is really transparent. But with this peer-to-peer -peer charging, it is a game changer. If your car dies, you can plug it in, you charge it up as much as you need it, and then you're good to go. Now the bi-directional charging is also an amazing use for your house. Your power's out, it's the middle of winter. All of a sudden, your car can heat your house a little bit, keep your food going, basic essentials. Now here in Michigan, I know that feeling because it was five degrees this morning. That is freaking cold. If our power went out, that is dangerous levels and Texas went through it. We're not alone. Depending on where you are, it could get worse. So having this as a backup is awesome. Number three, another feature that I think is really important for this truck is the power base. 10 separate outlets for you to charge and power, whether you're camping, you're on the work site, whatever your needs are, 10 outlets is an insane amount of power that you can bring to wherever you are with this truck. You've got this massive Ultium battery and this power base lets you make the most of it. Now, a total secondary amazing feature that comes with most electric cars and trucks is the Frunk. And Chevy went ahead and decided, we don't like the name Frunk. We wanna be different. We wanna have something added to market and have our own unique term. So they introduced the e-trunk. Now it is electric. It does open up and it does have outlets. Sure, throw an E in front of trunk, but I'm just gonna call it a frunk. And this E-frunk checks a lot of boxes. You can pop it open with the app. 
in the cabin or the key fob and it will have the outlets and it has a ton of room. Because this truck was built from the ground up, they really maximized that space. It is gonna be a huge benefit for storing things, powering your workstation. And these frunks really change the way that we think about trucks as needing to throw everything in the bed or having something that feels like a normal, say SUV trunk, clean, easy access. Now, driving a truck is often hard, especially parking. Now, I used to ballet in the Metro Detroit area and I really struggled getting in and driving other people's massive trucks and parking them in really small parking lots. The maneuverability is not easy. Now, I am not been a truck owner, but I've driven trucks and their turning radius and their maneuverability in tight spaces is difficult. And hearing about this four wheel steering. Now this is the same trick that it's borrowing from the Hummer EV is coined the quadra steer. So the quadra steer is really going to help the turning radius, the maneuverability, and whether you're off-roading or in a tight spot, just trying to park, this four wheel steering is going to be a game changer. If you're used to a massive pickup truck, all right, let's talk specs for a second. Torque, speed, towing, personally don't care that much about torque and the their wide open watts because I really don't drive over the speed limit and it's fun to accelerate fast a few times as a trick, but does it really affect how I'm driving day to day? No. The first edition RST gets up to 664 horsepower and 780 pounds of torque. Now the standard work truck will receive 510 horsepower and about 615 pounds of torque. Also towing capacity is up to 10,000 pounds with the RST. Unfortunately, compared to the Lightning's capacity for payload, which is 2,000 pounds, the Silverado only has about 1,300 pounds of payload. Next on this list is arguably the most important number that they came out with, and that is 400 mile range. That is impressive. That really makes you forget about range anxiety. Or if you're towing something and you have a ton of stuff in your truck, your battery is not going to be abysmal. In the US, in Michigan, we drive far distances often. Having that range just completely takes off the burden of the anxiety that you would feel. So the new electric skateboard build of the Ultium platform really shines. It's capable of a really impressive quick charge. 350 kilowatts with DC quick charging is should be the standard should be the standard moving forward for all of these massive trucks but it's great to see that they have this here with this 800 volt battery system and that fast charging approximately 100 miles of ev range will happen in just 10 minutes of fast charging 10 minutes for 100 miles i think would shock a lot of people who don't understand recharging uh, an electric vehicle. All right, next on this list is the Multiflex Power Lift Gate. Now, GM and Chevy have been really pushing the features that their lift gate has. I feel like th there's a big battle in cool lift gates, and I think they do a pretty good job here. There's a ton of options that they have here, and each one has its own unique practicality. I can see if I had this truck, I would definitely want this lift gate. Each car company is really focusing on autonomy as well as electrification, and they are really rolling out this Super Cruise. Having some autonomy, whether it's level two, and if they can grow and learn a level three in the future, but it is really great to see that Super Cruise is here. And as a really cool bonus, it is trailering capable. So you can be on the highway in Super Cruise, pulling something, and then just be calm and enjoy the quiet ride that is your electric Silverado. So number 10, the best feature, the biggest, the headline, the coolest thing that they came out with, multi-flex mid-gate. The space and storage that you get with the flex of this expandable space is awesome. It takes the 511 bed to nine, 10 feet. You're talking about casually throwing in kayak without thinking about it. This really does change the way I think about pickup trucks. So let's talk about why this mid-gate really does pack a punch. You've got the 60-40 fold down, so you can have someone literally sitting in one seat, fold the majority of that mid-gate down and use that as storage. And it folds down really flat. Like I love when things fold flat and flush. If you're gonna have something fold, 
make it fold flat. It's just better. Now, is the RST worth over a hundred thousand dollars? Well, right now in the current market of, uh, you can only buy an R1T or get in line for other pickup trucks. I would say, yeah, sure. But in the future, when this Silverado comes out and it is over a hundred thousand dollars competing with the Lightning and the Cybertruck and the R1T, I really just don't think the value is there. But I'm very critical because I am dying to become a Cybertruck owner. So I have my bias. So let me just talk about the highlights that I think really make this truck shine. They built it from the ground up. They didn't just slap their Silverado body onto their Altium skateboard battery pack. What they did was build from the ground up first principles, and that's what you need to do with these electric cars and, and trucks if you really wanna make the most out of this new era in vehicles. Electric vehicles and ICE are such different builds and there's so many different components that you really do get the benefits when you start from scratch. All right, I'm gonna put my critical hat on right now and let me just break down some of the things that I'm not sold on. I just think it's funny that they chose to make it look so much like the Avalanche but call it a Silverado. Now I understand the Silverado nameplate has insane brand loyalty and just holds a ton of value. So I don't fault them. I just think it's funny, but let's get into the styling. I think the Avalanche is one of the ugliest trucks. I really, really do not like the, the eh, that comes after the cabin. Personally, totally an aesthetic thing. I'm not sold on the look of it, but I do think Ford has something going with this lightning that looks exactly like their other truck because you can tell it is electric without making it feel like it's less than or it's different you can still feel like you're driving a f-150 so i just am not sold on the look maybe when i see one in person i'll think otherwise all right my next criticism is the rolling out of this work truck and the rst without any future hope for a reasonable mass production passenger truck. They really have no interest in cannibalizing their money-making Silverado ICE vehicles. Now let's put our futurist hats on. When do we think a Silverado EV mass market comes out? It's going to be a long time. They're going to have so many commercial buyers and they're lined up. They're ready to buy an electric car. It just makes sense on paper. We need to focus on the commercial side of things as well as the passenger. So I don't fault them there. It just feels a little weird. I've heard people speculate that it's less scary for their brand. They just went through a rough go of it with this bolt, recalling all these batteries. So they do a huge mass production and get this truck into everyone's hands and then something goes wrong, I think is their worst nightmare. To me, that makes sense to be a little weary and to slowly ramp up. It just doesn't leave me with the most optimistic hope for where they're going. Now, as a marketing and advertising guy, I'm very critical of the terms that they use and coin their features and their little things. And Chevy Silverado is definitely not short of them. They've got a ton of quirky names. Kind of building off their Ultium name is Altify, which is their over the air updating. Is it kind of like Wi-Fi or I can see what they're going for, but really it just feels like a made up word. And I have no idea what Altify means. Whereas if you just say over the air updates or software updates or in layman's terms, I like layman's term. Just trying to come up with another name for frunk, e trunk, that it's like electric. Yeah, I can charge things. So maybe that's why it's an e trunk, but why don't you just call it a frunk? Uh, my next concern is with the software UI. And I'm really concerned about all of these car companies coming out with huge screens and not having great software UI. Apple and Google have been crushing this. Our phones and our tablets are so easy to navigate and they've been doing it for so long. And now Tesla's really had a good head start. They've been crushing the software game because they roll out updates all the time. And this is where I'm really holding my breath. When I see those big screens, I just think, oh boy, there's gonna be some really awkward, some really clunky navigation and just confusion with the endless options that a screen like that brings. And then I'm also concerned that it doesn't bring the benefits that Tesla's bring with the YouTube and Netflix and gaming and amazing things like that. You have the screens. Are you gonna be able to make the biggest use of them? I don't know. 
I think you really have to just get in there and touch it and feel it and navigate yourself. But that's a huge concern of mine. It's a reason why I bought a used car with the trim that does not have navigation because it would feel so old and clunky. It's an older car, so they didn't, there's no updating it. So the, the thought of looking at like a 10 year old navigation screen, basically I would rather print out MapQuest. All right, my biggest criticism for the Silverado is kind of just a blanket for most OEMs and legacy autos, but I cringe at these words like available and optional and just for an extra $10,000, you can have power lift gate. All of these core features that are really making this truck cool, like the mid gate being optional and it's not on the work truck. You're buying a work truck. It does not have the multi flex mid gate. That's a shame. It really is. If you're coming out with this car and it, you have the coolest features, but we're going to charge you and nickel and dime you every step of the way. It just ruins the experience for me. I am pretty frugal. And so I'm going to look at the, that spreadsheet and I'm going to say, is this feature worth it? And there's going to be a ton of optional available features. And I'm probably going to say no to most of them. And then I'm going to get a truck all of a sudden is way less useful and practical than I really hoped for. And that is why I'm getting a Cybertruck. Now their trim levels are based on the motors and the batteries. The basic car is really the same. You're going to get the same bed, the same power. There's a, there's a term in marketing where you have this diminishing return with choice and the more choices, the less you're going to be happy with the choice you made. So I, I really want to see car companies simplify and make standard the really important features that might just be me. And don't even get me started on the nickel and diming that the dealerships will probably do once this thing comes out. So the Silverado, it is clean, modern, brand new, fresh looking electric truck. And it's going into production really soon. You're going to be seeing work trucks in the RST potentially by the end of 2023. So that's really exciting. But the ramp up of mass production of this truck, I'm not sold on, but I really want to give Chevy the benefit of the doubt. And I really want to congratulate them. They are really pushing or at least trying. They've been trying for a long time with the Bolt and I really want to see them continue to drive the electric future forward. This has been Mark from the Electric Motor City and I really appreciate you watching.